Hello, my noble band of outlaws. Outlaw Samurai, come here to live with a video. It's knife unboxing time. And I know what you're going to say, outlaw. Your whole shtick is swords. Why are you trying to get on, like, Joe's uh, shtick of swords and knives? And yes, I am aware this is a tanto, but tanto in Japanese just simply means knife. The reason being is that I collect all manner of weapon and blade. And a knife is a weapon and a tool. A kitchen knife is a weapon just as much as this tanto is a weapon in the proper hands. Well, without further ado, don'ts and probably shouldn'ts. Let's get started. Now, this knife is a little different than most other knives because this knife actually does a better job of copying a much more famous knife. That being a buck knife. Now we all know the classic buck folder knife. I don't have a buck folder knife, but we sell them at Menards and they're like 60 bloody bucks. 70 actually. This is a quarter of that price at seven, at not seven, twenty four to twenty dollars. So, what are you getting in difference between the guidesman's rendition and the buck rendition? Now, everyone knows. about the Buck 110 folder. Do we see a pattern difference here? Do we see the um, similarities? The Guidesman is pretty much a palette swapped copy of the Buck original. Now you're probably wondering, Outlaw, why would I want a palette swap? Why would I want this over a trusted Made in America brand? Well, first of all, Guidesman, while well, made in China, does a better job of re making this knife than Buck does. And that comes down to a few different things. Their choice in handle materials, and blade material. Plus, the carrying pouch is not as gaudy or overbuilt or overpurposed. Guidesman is really for people who want functionality over glitz and glamour. Now, why do I say that this knife has a superior steel to the one on the box? Well, Buck is notoriously famous for using 420 HRC. Or 420HC, depending on the packaging. What this is, is just 420 stainless steel, the common everyday kitchen knife grade stainless steel that has a little more carbon in it than normal. And while technically that does produce a harder, sharper edge compared to its base form, this is HCR13 MOV steel which has a higher corrosion resistance, holds a higher, sharper edge, and holds it longer than 420. So, it's a superior steel to the 420 HRC that Buck uses. Next, why I say its fittings are 
well, I don't really know if we'd call these fittings more handle construction, but why are these superior to the buck knife? Well, first of all, this is an all steel construction compared to the buck knife that uses brass. And while the brass does look attractive, we all know that brass is weaker than steel, especially when it's this thin. Now, brass and copper suba can brass and copper suba and uh, fushira and kashiras, they can get away with that simply because they are not holding as much structural integrity as a folding knife. They're just metal bands that help keep the wooden handle from splitting apart. Believe me, if the Japanese could have used iron or copper, not iron, not copper, if they could have used iron for habakis that it didn't destroy the blades, they would have. But not only is it an all steel construction, it also has G10 handle scales. Now, for those of you who don't know, G10 is a very good handle material. Especially when it gets wet, it still retains a lot of traction. The buck knife uses wooden handle scales that are polished and uh, sealed off. So if they get wet, they become a lot slippery. Of course, you also have the classic lockback design, clip point, and as I mentioned, HCR13 MOV steel. All right. HCR steel, clip point, set and finish, lockback is made out of G10 and 420SS uh, stainless steel. Now, you heard me bagging on 420 before, but 420 in the, uh, hand, in the handle fittings is different than a 420 blade. 420 can be used for fittings just fine and it will hold up. But in terms of edge retention and strength, I'd rather have the HCR 13 MOE. Lengths are 3.625 inch uh, blade length, 5 inch even handle, and 8.625 inches overall. So it does give you a generous amount of purchase on the grip. Especially for carving, whittling, what have you. There's a slight bit of wiggle in the blade. Not too terrible. It's there, but remember. While the buck may have a tight blade and everything. And uh, more fancy fittings. This is pretty much the poor man's version of buck that does it better in terms of its materials. Would I want a traditional buck knife? Hell yes, if nothing more for the novelty of it. But I'd rather carry this every day than the buck knife simply because of the blade steel. Yeah. Folds up nicely. Has good retention. Snaps closed, and there's a slight bit of wiggle up and down, but most of it is side to side. And I'd be remiss if I didn't show how sharp the edge was. Alright, it may be a bit toothy, a slight bit dull for how I'd like my knives, 
I like my knives to tend to be just a hair sharper than my swords. Like, if my sword can shave my arm in a few passes, I expect my knives to be able to do it in one kind of thing. Overall, not that bad. The sheath is another thing. This is simple blackened leather. Good quality. Has a button cover. Overall, very nice. I'm very happy with it. There's no overbuiltness to it, for lack of a better term. There's no overly trying to compensate for anything. It's just a simple black leather holster, if you would. Can't really call it a sheath, because the whole damn knife goes into it. It's a holster, like a gun holster. That's how it fits with the butt end of the knife going in first, but most people will be putting the knife in like so. so there's no difference in how this closes, so you can put the knife in, in any orientation that you so chose as long as it fit into the sheath or if you so chose just drop this in your pocket and carry it like normal now there is one thing I'm not a fan of and this is shared between this and the buck is that there is no thumb choil for me to push the blade off I have to physically open and close this thing two-handed now Generally speaking, there's also a means of closing it one-handed, where uh, I'll use the body of this lighter. You just basically push the tip down, push the back lock, and then you can just close it one-handed from there. But... These are, I want to say these are the kind of knives you'd give as a first knife to a teenager. And what do I mean by this? I mean like when the teenager turns like 14, 15 years old and you're thinking, hmm, he's old enough, he's mature enough, I'm going to get him his first pocket knife. Kind of the rite of passages for teenagers. This is what I would recommend. It's cheap. It reflects the higher quality one, but has better materials. It requires two hands to open, so they can't fast flip deploy or anything like that. Like show off, like, ooh, look at me, I'm doing fucking butterfly knife shit. Then all of a sudden, bam. Now, there is a means of opening these one-handed, but it's not very easy. You essentially have to push the blade out and then push here on the Ricasso to open it. Very slow, very unimpressive. Not the kind of knife I would carry if I was going to use as a protection blade, but as a first-time knife, this would work very well. So, until next time, my noble band of outlaws, outlaw samurai, tells all y'all, be crazy rednecks, be safe and use your weapons, and honestly, this would also work well if you're just looking for something cheap and easy as an everyday carry. Like all stainless steels and all steels in general, you'll have to sharpen it periodically a few passes on the 6,000 grit every other few days if you have a work sharp, or a few straps on a leather strop if you 
uh, stop your blades and you should be able to maintain its edge for quite a while before you need to do any kind of serious resharpening. So, in any case, I'm out. Peace.